Hey gang, your old pal Clay here, Mountain Music Exchange, and today we are going to take a little trip to Nerdville, USA. Alright gang, so what I have with me here right now is the Epiphone Joe Bonamassa 1955 Les Paul Standard in Copper iridescent which I think is just a cool name it's a classy sounding name for a color but this is also a very unique color I can't really describe to you exactly how this color sort of fluctuates with the light I'll do my best to get it here and I'm not even sure that if I show you some up close b-roll footage right off that it's gonna really drive it home sort of how the light changes and adjust this color ever so slightly but before i get into that i really want to talk about something real quick like the joe bonamassa guitars right every year there's you know a new joe bonamassa signature model that comes out uh typically through epiphone sometimes gibson the amos model for example the flying v is coming out through the gibson murphy lab very shortly if it's not out already by the time you see this video and that is a really really cool guitar I think it hits maybe the $25,000 price point somewhere along that line. You know, we're all guitar nerds here at Mountain Music Exchange, and that includes, you know, specs, the history, everything like that. You know, a lot of us, myself included, uh, really probably not going to be able to attain a lot of those vintage guitars or even, you know, certain price points, custom shop, things like that, reissues of a lot of these. But with these Epiphone Joe Bonamassa models, what I think is really cool is by putting his name on these, we really get to experience a cool level of guitar history and a, like a like provenance, you know, uh, of rare or vintage guitars that we would otherwise maybe never be able to even put our hands on, let alone own and play for a very affordable price point. I'll, I'll give you an example. This one here with a Lipton style hard shell case, certificate of authenticity, CTS pots, Mallory capacitors, 849. That's a, that's a good price. That's a lot of value for a guitar with, you know, some provenance really. I mean, there's a really good chance most of us are not going to be able to find a copper iridescent 1955 Gibson Les Paul. As you know, most of them were gold top, right? If not all of them, when I say most, I mean, there were a very select few that came in this sort of copper iridescent color, the brown thing, as Joe calls it. This is a guitar that's really slick. If you are into the P90 style Les Paul, this may be the one for you. You know, if this is your price point, this could be the one. So we're gonna go from top to bottom on this. Once we do that, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna plug it up, give it a go, and see how it sounds maybe with some clean, some dirty, just see what this thing really like does see what the uh the hubbub is all about so without further ado let's go ahead and get started on that up here you'll see you have the kalamazoo headstock that epiphone kalamazoo headstock i changed around 2020 to sort of both reflect epiphone's history with guitars and just be a little more in line with that sort of gibson open book headstock it is not the same but it is a little closer and it does help models like this sort of blend a little better in the gibson epiphone lineup of things and i always thought that was really cool i really like this headstock and on that you will get epiphone 18 to 1 the sort of Cluson style tuners. You get a mahogany neck with this and it's got really good grain on it. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But you get a mahogany neck with this. It is a rounded C profile. I would say it is, and I know this is very vague, but just in my hands, the feel, it is bigger than a 60s neck, but it's not what I would consider something like a 58 style big baseball bat neck. It is chunky and it does fill your hand up, but it is not as slim or as thick as the 60s or 50s respectively. Uh, of course you get the standard style binding all the way down the neck all the way down the body here one ply on a mahogany body with a maple top now you do get a laurel fingerboard here with perloid inlays just a cool vibe all the way around with this just very very les paul standard now some of the things that are different from most les paul standards that you'd see now i realize early les paul standards and reissues and some classics some variations of les paul do have p90s but you do have the soap bar style p90s here these are the p90 pros they are hooked up to mallory capacitors and CTS pots. Now, speaking of pots and these knobs that sit on top of them, they are a really cool, there is something very interesting about these. When I first saw these, I thought these were black speed knobs and, and they're not. 
they are actually a super dark, sort of almost color matched to the guitar. Super dark amber copper color. And I'm not sure if that was original to that guitar, or if that's just something that age has maybe caused over the years, or if that's a modification that Joe Bonamassa has made. I'm sure there's probably a video where he's talking about it and can tell you way more than me. But they look really good. They match the guitar really, really well. I think it's overall a very good look. You get a Loctone ABR1 style bridge with wire retainer. I say ABR1 style because it does go into bushings here rather than directly into the body. And of course, your standard stop bar tailpiece. A couple of hundred bucks more than what you would pay for a Les Paul standard from Epiphone, right? And you get a hard shell case. You get a cool certificate of authenticity that's like the hard sort of booklet type thing that you would get with a Gibson Custom Shop, for example, right? And of course, you know, all the tag swag stickers and things like that that come with other Epiphones as well. But also look at the grain on this. Now, I've seen the grain on other Epiphones. I don't, I'm not normally like one of those grain snobs where I'm like looking at it and like, oh, this is not the right type of mahogany or whatever, but what I've noticed about this is that this is a seam right up the middle. The grain looks very, very similar to the grain that you might find on a Gibson Les Paul. Up the neck as well looks like a Gibson USA grain. This is some of the coolest looking grain that I've seen on an Epiphone guitar. This is not an Epiphone inspired by Gibson Custom. This is an Epiphone sort of on the standard line, just a signature issue from that standard line. And this looks great. This is some of the best looking grain. I know I'm going on about that, but I mean, I've even played inspired by Gibson Custom Les Pauls that did not have grain that looked this close to like a Gibson USA, for example. I don't know if they're all like this either, but this one certainly is. And this guitar just has a cool overall vibe. And not only that, the case that you'll get with this is that sort of Lifton style case, you know, that brown with the pink interior. And that's gonna have, you know, like I said, the case candy that comes with it. You're gonna get that certificate of authenticity that opens up like sort of like a hardback type thing, which is very cool. And it's just got a lot going for it at this price point. So kudos to Epiphone and kudos to Joe Bonamassa because I don't think otherwise, if, if, if his name weren't attached to something like this, I don't think we'd just be getting an Epiphone version of this guitar. I think maybe at some point down the line, Gibson would dig into its history and make a very, very authentic sort of custom shop version of this. With this, you really get a lot of history. Everything here is cool vintage vibe, cool guitar, cool blues guitar, cool rock guitar. We wouldn't have that without that. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bonamassa and to Epiphone for making stuff like this happen. Stuff like the ES model before that happened, you know, like the Epiphone Amos V. There are people that can get their hands on those that otherwise would not normally be able to do so. And that's just a good thing for guitar players all around. So without further ado, gang, I'm going to give this thing a run for its money. Let's check it out. Let's see how this thing actually sounds and feels. I'm going to be running a Line 6 Helix. I'm going to be using like the US Princess amp because it's got just a little bit of breakup in that amp model. And I'm also going to be using Brit 2203 because it's got that sort of JCM 800-ish Marshall vibe that you can really work the volume knob with and the tone knob. And we're going to see how this thing sounds because that is ultimately what counts. Without further ado, let's give her a spin. <laughs>
right, gang, so my thoughts on this guitar, more resonant than I think I expected it to be, a poly Epiphone guitar. I mean, I think even if I were to play it right now, you can probably hear that pretty well, all things considered. You can feel the vibrations through the guitar, which is sort of like a benchmark or a hallmark for me personally on am I going to want to play this guitar more, you know. And you can feel that with this guitar. I also think these P90s sound great. They're just the standard Epiphone Pro P90s, but I think maybe because of the pots and capacitors that are in this, it sort of helps sort of open up the sound a little differently than maybe what your standard old, you know, a few years ago model Epiphone Fair may have done. So I think maybe that really helps out overall in the tone. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below and tell me what you think about how this guitar looks, how it sounds, what you think of another Joe Bonamassa model being out this year. Do you collect these? Do you have one of every year or do you just kind of find one that sort of meets the historical bullet points that you like, like a Flying V style or an ES style or a, one of the other Les Pauls, you know? Um, let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget, gang, you can check us out online. You can check out this guitar and more at the new arrival section at mountainmusicexchange.com. You can also grab some apparel from there as well. Uh, it is starting to get chilly out as of the recording of this video, so we do have hoodies online if you want to check those out. And uh, that's going to have us on this one, gang. Listen, I thank you guys a ton for watching. I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the guitar. And just don't forget, gang, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, make it loud. I'm Clay. You rock. See you, gang.